Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about the Haas effect or the President's effect, which is simply the ears and mind's ability to localize sound based on time. What this means is if we have the same signal coming to our ear from two different loudspeakers and we delay one of those loudspeakers, the sound will tend to sound like it's coming more from the speaker that is not delayed. So I'm going to use Audacity to demonstrate this effect. In this case, I'm going to use um, a track that I have on iTunes. And I'm going to show you how to convert that track from its uh, file format that I'm using, which is MP4A, uh, into a WAV file using QuickTime. If you don't have QuickTime, um, you can always do this by bringing in the file using a CD, uh, just directly from the CD. So I'm just typing a name here. I want to bring up a file from this is Catherine Burns uh, record I'm using. So here's the file that I want to bring in. A flower is a lovesome thing. And I'm going to um, option click on it and choose open with QuickTime Player 7. So what that does is it opens it up in QuickTime. And you can see the file format right here. It says it's uh, it ends in the uh, with a dot m4a. So that's a it's called a MAPEG4 uh, type file. And we want to turn that into an uh, WAV file. To do that, you can do that with QuickTime, and there's other programs that you can use as well. Um, we're going to use the export command in, in QuickTime 7. You have to have 7. Uh, the newest uh, version of QuickTime doesn't do this. So export and you want to export sound to wave. There's a bunch of, bunch of choices here. We're going to choose sound to waves and choose save. And it will export this file to a wave file. So now that we have that as a wave file, let's go to Audacity and open that file. So I'm going to go to my Documents folder, and there it is. So now we can open this file. Once again, it's asking me to make a copy, and I, I generally like to do that. Um, so there's the track. So what we want to do in this case is actually convert this to a mono track. Um, so we're going to do that by splits uh, stereo to mono. So now if I zoom in, which is command one, and go to the front, we'll see that we have the same exact file here. And as you zoom in, you can see that the waveforms are exactly the same, um, which is necessary. F I mean, you can do it with stereo files, but it's, you're going to hear the effect a lot uh, clearer if you uh, use just uh, one mono file. Okay, so what we're going to do is go back and have this be the left channel and have this be the right channel. And we're going to use the tool that's the time shifting tool, listen right here, and just shift the right track slightly later than the left track. And if you do that now and listen on speakers, it, you'll hear a bigger difference, but on headphones it should come out well too. That's actually a little more um, time than I probably needed to shift it. We zoom in a little bit more, we can see the time frames. Yeah, I, I uh, shifted it about um, uh, 20 some odd milliseconds. Let's try to go more like six. Now, what you should be hearing at this point is the sound is seeming like it's coming more out of the left channel than the right. Um, and the reason for that is our ear brain localizes sound with many different cues. One of them is the time arrival. 
So if we have the same volume on left and right, but if one arrives sooner than the other, then our localization will shift to that side. So that's what's happening now, is we're hearing this sound sort of shifted to the left because of the president's effect, one sound uh, preceding the other, which is also called the Haas effect. So I'd like you to play around with this and try different am amounts of shifting this in the file. Remember, you can go to the front here with this button, the beginning of the tr track. And if you zoom in, you can see these numbers here. Uh, this would be uh, four milliseconds. One millisecond represents one thousandth of a second. And so that would be four milliseconds right there. I'd like you to experiment on your own. Try moving the sound closer and closer with a shorter and shorter delay and see how that changes your perception of localization. and see what values give you the most shift and I think what you'll find is that this is going to the amount of shifting that you get from from right to left will depend on the frequencies that's being shifted so the longer wavelengths for instance um, are going to take a little bit longer delay to get shifted as much and the mids will take less and then at the highs it gets somewhat ambiguous at the very high frequencies so anyway, I'd like you to play around and see what you think. So one point I want to make is a typical way that we change localization and mixing is by using volume differences between left and right channels to pan the signal from left to right. There are other ways that you can pan signals and one of those ways is by using time arrival differences. <laughs> 